There's the Bad Airport, and then there's San Francisco International Airport. I'm Gavin What in the world is up with that? San Francisco International takes a shot at a rival calling it the Bad Airport. Okay, sure, they never mention LAX by name, but once you see the video for yourself, you'll get the picture. Los Angeles is facing quite possibly the worst budget crisis our city has ever seen. And in the midst of their colleagues losing their jobs, some in the city council refuse to take a pay cut. So you know what? We'll tell you who they are. Runaway Toyotas have been the news, but the runaway truck couldn't stop and some poor car paid the price. Don't worry. The driver was okay, but you've got to see the rest. All the stories people are talking about and everything you need to know right now on The Filter. Hello again on the Filter Forefront, our top four of the day, including you have the right to say what you want, or maybe you don't. But we'll start with this. I don't begrudge anybody making as much money as humanly possible. I don't think anybody is ever overpaid. No matter what you do, you get what the market will bear. That being said, for the city of Los Angeles, the market is barren. Employees are losing their jobs and taking pay cuts. Should the people in charge take a pay cut, too? Some say yes, others say no. Who has taken a pay cut? The mayor. Eric Garcetti, Ed Reyes, Paul Koretz, Dennis Zein, Tom LaVange, Jose Huizar, Jan Perry, and Janice Hahn. Who tried it and didn't like it? Paul Krikorian and Tony Cardenas. Who has refused to take a pay cut? Bernard Parks, Herb Wesson, Bill Rosendahl, Greg Smith, and Richard Alarcon. Keep in mind, city councilmen earn almost $179,000 a year. Our contributors tonight, Emmy Award-winning journalist David Reese and the editor of RedCounty.com, Matt Cunningham. Our pictures are furnished by Skype. And Matt, I'm going to start with you. Do you think the voters care if these people take a pay cut? Uh, I certainly do. I think this year they, um, they take into account. I mean, they, uh, they're having a hard time economically. They're having to cut back at home. They see their local government is uh, running a deficit, cutting back services. So I think it looks bad when the elected officials refuse to pitch into the shared sacrifice themselves when they're making so much money. Uh, whether they'll pay a price at the ballot box, I don't know. I would think they probably don't think so. Bernard Parks and Richard Alarcon, for example, are refusing to take it. They must feel pretty secure that the voters aren't going to punish them at the polls. David, what do you think? I actually agree on this one um, with Matt. I think it's really outrageous that our um, city leaders aren't going to share the pain that they're expecting all of the folks below them to do. I mean, here we're going to lay off you know, up to 4,000 city workers, and yet our leaders won't share the pain by taking just a 10% pay cut. I'd like to point out that if they, everyone in the city of L.A. on the city of L.A.'s rolls took a 10% pay cut, no one would have to be laid off at all. And um, my favorite is... Bill Rosendahl, who said, oh, well, you know, I'll do it, but I don't want to be the first. Why should I be the first? Hi, because you're on the city council. You are a city leader. You need to go first. So, you know, I think it's it's the height of arrogance for them to expect other people to take a pay cut and for them not to do the same thing. Here's the thing that that I don't understand. We know people are in trouble. And quite frankly, if they all took a pay cut, would it really make that much of a difference? Not really. I mean, they're not going to solve the entire crisis. You're a hundred million dollars in the hole. So that's not going to help. But it's the perception that you care. Thank you. That's the thing that I don't understand. The perception that you give a damn about the people who voted for you and the people in the city of Los Angeles. And, by and Fred, you know what? You pointed out something a minute ago that you said that you're not opposed to people being overpaid and that they are paid what the market will bear. Exactly. That's, that's the problem here is that these people aren't in the free market. They're public servants. OK, they, so they need to be responsive to the people they serve. Go ahead, Matt. You want one more comment real well, quick? The- I think David made a very good point. It's not the market bearing here. They get their money by taking it from taxpayers' wallets against their will. I, mean, right. I don't have the – I get taxed what I want to or not. Yeah, against their will. Okay. Well, who wants to pay? No, I, please. I don't. Okay. <laughs> if you smoke, would you like to light up a cigarette right now? You know the dangers, but if you like to smoke, you like to smoke. Various local governments have banned smoking outside of restaurants at local parks, beaches, and piers. Today, state lawmakers considered a proposal to ban smoking at state parks and beaches. Supporters say it would reduce litter, limit exposure to secondhand smoke, and prevent wildfires. Today, that proposal fell short of the number of votes needed. They're going to try it again next week. Now, I'm shocked they put out that fire. Should people be allowed to smoke in state parks and on state beaches, David? Yes, they should, because you know what? It's public property. And you don't have to like smoking. You don't have to smoke yourself. This is America. You can do whatever you want. But the point is, 
this is America. I can do what I want. You can do what you want. And I don't have to like what you do, and you don't have to like what I do. But it doesn't mean I can tell you that you can't do it. And so my objection to this is that if you want to make this a littering issue because you don't like, you know, cigarette butts around, fine. Let's call it what it is. It's but, a littering issue. But that's Why don't not you find people? That's not what they're doing. And you and I both know that. What they're saying is secondhand smoke is bad. I don't want to be around smokers. Therefore, that's right. It has not, I mean, I like that. You know, they, they shroud it with, well, it's not going to be as That's dirty right. anymore. That's right, and it's, and it's a bunch of bull. Let's call it what right. it is. Uh, absolutely. I'm absolutely with you on this. Let's call it what it is, and that is it's easy to bash smokers because it's not in vogue. What about alcohol? Alcohol is not good for you. You're going to tell, me, you know, tell everybody you can't smoke in, or drink in public at all? You know, I but mean, I, come on. Where do you draw the line? But let me, let me draw the line there because if you're drinking in public, it's not affecting me sitting next to you unless you get so drunk you punch me. Or you get in a car and you drive drunk. If you're smoking, secondhand smoke can affect other people. Matt, what do you think? Well, you know, I'm on the Orange County Parks Commission. And the very first vote I had to cast was on a proposed uh, ban on smoking on county beaches. And I voted against it because it's the health there is so exaggerated. You're, you're, you're smoking outdoors. You're at the beach or in a giant air conditioner. The wind's blowing the smoke away. You're not harming anybody. And the litter issues are over are overstated as well. You might as well ban anybody bringing in a, a paper bag or a sack lunch or or a, a can of Coke if you're if, if we're going to ban everything that might cause littering. I think David's right. This is a, a liberty issue. This is these are public parks that are established for the enjoyment of the people, smokers and non-smokers alike. I mean, it's reasonable to restrict smoking in a fire-sensitive area. That's a public safety issue. But to just tell you you can't smoke. With uh, over with exaggerated health risk scares, uh, I think is is an abridgment of our of our liberty and our ability to enjoy our own parks that we pay for. So what I'm Amen, taking, Matt, I agree with you. So what I'm taking from the two of you is the rights of non-smokers in this situation do not trump the rights of smokers. Is that fair to say? Is that what you're saying? Fair enough. That's correct. Okay, let's move on.